carriages. Right. Four mile an hour pavement scooters, which you see nipping around the s supermarket. Yeah. They're class two mobility scooters. Right. To negotiate a track like this, you'd need a class three mobility scooter, which is more powerful. Is that like the one that they have at South Olney then? Yes. The that's, that's a class three. Right. It's not a true road going class three because they've deliberately had it restricted to four mile an hour for safety reasons. Right. But it does have all the power of a class three. Yeah. And that's what you need for this. You don't need eight mile an hour to go there, but you do need the power of a class three. And right. so I want access to all walks to all Inverley carriages. Okay. I'll get you to tell me a little bit about that and then and we'll, we'll record a bit to talk about that. Does that, right. that sound alright? Yeah. I'll just wait till these guys get their car brought in and stopped and switch the engine off and such like. The car's going through. I say that these, so illegal, these are illegal. These are intended then to stop people Riding motorbikes. Riding motorbikes through. Yeah. On the basis that you can't get a motorbike through there because it's just too close to, to yeah. that. Is that it? It's, yeah. It just would be too wide to, to go through that gap. Right. Is My this contention is that there's motorcycle barriers, they're not fit for purpose. Right. Because I can get a motorbike through there in a matter of seconds, but I can't get a mobility scooter through it. Right. Uh, how do you get it? Again, I'll get to tell this. How do you get a motorbike through just by kind of leaning it over and getting Basic, up it? And Basically, you push the wheel through one of the gaps, lean yeah. it over so that the engine's not hitting the bar and yeah, you're through. Yeah, it can be done. Okay. So you maybe, you maybe can't ride it through, but you can at least. I personally couldn't because I'm not up to the job, but lads who regularly ride scrambler bike, yeah. saying they laugh at those, they can drive them a far bigger things than those. That is one of their sports. Find the biggest boulder you can and drive over it. Yes, I'll take your point. And so these, the, the, the way that's been done there, obviously this is a kind of a baffle so that you can't straight through yeah. the vehicle but that's intended that you can get wheelchairs around there yeah. or push chairs I suppose so yeah um, push chairs I suppose but I don't think it's a legal requirement <laughs> to, to, to give young mothers access to anything <laughs> but it is disabled people yeah and okay. the number of disabled people that have the type of illnesses that are conducive to propelling a manual wheelchair yeah. It's very small indeed. Yeah. They're so ideal for people with no feet and big lungs. Yeah. For people with rubbish lungs. Yeah. You yeah. just can't. And, use and, a, and a in Barrow, I don't know the numbers, but I mean, there's a huge number of people using these in Barrow. It's quite a high proportion, isn't it, compared with yeah. other parts of the country yeah. as well? Yeah. It's because the town's basically so flat. It it works well yeah. to use the mobility skewers. Yeah. Also, a manual wheelchair. Things like the Westfield Nature Trail that you were on about. That's yeah. three and a half miles long. Yeah. How many disabled people could do three and a half miles there only to find that there's one yes. barrier that prevents them yes. going out the other end and have yes. to do the same three and a half miles back? Yes. To do that sort of walk in the first place, you need an electrically yeah. propelled vehicle. Okay. Don't steal all your own thunder because I want you to tell me some of that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, as I say, I'll get you to talk through some of these bits and pieces with me, okay? Yeah. And, and all about, uh, I want you to tell me that thing that you said again, relating to how you've been up there before, you'd like to be up there. Because you were saying what a great place it is. Well, so I'll ask you a bit about that. Everybody knows it's the, it's the best view in town. So, so it's, that's fine. I've been up twice and it's absolutely brilliant. One time, I brought two able-bodied people with me and they physically lifted my scooter over every one of those thumbs. And that's another point as well. I'll get you to tell me that then. Yeah. You get one path. Yeah. And it doesn't have a barrier at the start and a barrier at the beginning. It has barriers al along it as well. Totally unnecessary. Mm. If there's no other way on that path, no branch road or anything, mm. why do you need another barrier? Mm. That's a complete and utter waste of money. Okay. Right, we'll do a bit of recording. Are you, okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Great stuff. Um, right. First question is, is: Have you done this kind of stuff before, by the way, at all? Have you? You've uh, you've spoken to our politics show, haven't you, to do with um, the erosion? Is that right? Oh, that. That your politics show. No? I think it was BBC, uh, BBC, I, did a, uh, I did a video on coastal erosion, and, and a chap from Channel Five emailed me and says, "Can we use that oh, on right. our news thing?" Oh, and I, I said yes. I saw I saw your name because I I googled you earlier on, and I saw your name because I was trying to locate you in the first place. Mm. And I saw your name came up as something that, well, maybe you'd been quoted, I think that was it, in something that, I think it was the politics show had done, relating to coastal erosion.
but maybe it's just that you'd already been widely quoted and they just they just mentioned you again. I had no idea I'd it been on the on politics tele. show. It were on tele. Yeah, well that was Channel 5. Politics shows BBC. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I had no idea okay. I'd been on a politics show. Well, uh, it was on the website and it, it made mention of your name. It didn't say I'm not a campaigner there. as such. I've, I've done one video on coastal erosion which got picked up by a lot of local residents who suddenly realised it were a problem. It got picked up nationwide through Channel 5. It got yeah. picked up worldwide in so much I've had, had students and professors from Japan and America emailing me saying, really? can we use your video in our classes? Really? Yeah, of course you can. I'll put it up there for you. Play away, you know. Fantastic. But this is a totally separate thing. This affects me directly. It, it's a passion. I'd, it's not until you become disabled, or in my case, it wasn't until I became disabled that I really realised how much I'd been taking for granted. Okay. I'll remind me before we finish to make a note in my book to describe you as a mobility scooter user then rather than a campaigner if you, oh, if you don't, want, yeah, to, if you don't yeah. want to be labelled as a campaigner. I don't mind being labelled as a, a local campaigner for mobility scooter use, but right. I'm not a campaigner as such. Okay. Then the whole coast of erosion thing, me and her sit at home like giggling me like mad every time somebody mentions it. Want that po politics show on at 12 o'clock on a Sunday? It's the one that normally is, yeah. Yeah, we watched it. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. Anyway, no worries, <laughs> we'll do some recording about all of this and, and the barriers yeah. and so on, all right? Yeah. Right, first question is easiest by far. I'm just going to start recording and what I want you to do is just briefly introduce yourself for me. So in, in one line with your name nice and clearly and however I should describe you on the radio. Does that sound alright? Hello, my name's Colin Chapman. Yeah, just exactly that. I, I use, I, I'm, I live on Walney, I use a mobility scooter. Something like that is absolutely fine. Okay? Right. Great stuff. <coughs> In fact, what I'm also going to do is change the battery on that because it's just gone onto its lowest settings. Excuse me a minute. It's one of those days today. Please still follow me if you would. Hello, my name's Colin Chabon. I live on Walney Island and I'm a mobility scooter user. That's fantastic. That's absolutely fine. Good. Tell me about the problems that you're having with particularly these barriers going on to uh, footpaths. Well, the problems are basically that I can't use any of the local footpaths. There are two footpaths in the area that claim to be disabled friendly, neither of which are and the vast majority of which are downright discriminatory. What sort of barriers are in your way? The ones that are commonly described as motorcycle barriers. Quite often, they're not actually... It's all right. It's all right. just stop and start again. Yeah, I, that. I, that we're going to lead into a long ramble and I, I don't think you wanted that. That's all right, I'll ask you again then. Um, you want me to describe the types of barriers? I was going to say, yeah, just briefly, um, yeah. Tell me about the barriers that are causing you problem. The barriers that I'm most concerned with are the huge metal constructions which the councils will tell you are there to stop motorcycles. But they're doing more than stopping motorbikes. They're not stopping motorbikes. I could get a motorbike through them, but I can't get a legal mobility scooter through. Now we should say, these are the big sort of tubular steel things. They've got um, a place at the side where you can get a conventional wheelchair through by the look of it and they've got a, a sort of an obstruction that's supposed to stop you riding a motorbike through there but why doesn't any of that work the way it should? Well, these routes are quite often on places... Oh, start again, I know what I'm going to say. These routes are quite often along places where a manual wheelchair just isn't pra practical up and down steep hills and so on. The second point is that only a small m minority of disabled people are capable of propelling themselves in a manual wheelchair. So to all intents and purposes, when you're talking about scenic walks, what you're talking about is allowing access to class of two and three electric mobility scooters. Anything short of that only caters for a minority of disabled people. So what you're saying is some of the distances involved in these paths and, and the gradients and so on are just too much for a conventional manual wheelchair to cope with anyway? Yes, they are. But there is also the point that not many disabled people are capable of using a manual wheelchair in the first place. Just sort of 
sort of expand on this a bit more, you know, so, so you know, tell me about what they use. If you have heart or lung problems, then you're more likely to have a, either an electric wheelchair, which strictly speaking is, is best used in very confined spaces, shops and the like, or a class two or three electric invalid carriage. They're designed for up to 30 miles range. They can climb very steep gradients. They're what you would use by choice on countryside walks and scenic routes. Tell me about what you miss by not being able to get on the, to these routes that you'd like to. In a word, adventure. Quite often I have no idea what I'm missing because I can't get there to see it. It's a combination of curiosity and adventure. I want to be able to access places... Sorry, I'll start that bit again. I don't mind my disability restricting access to where I go and what I do. But I will not tolerate other people placing unnecessary barriers in my way, preventing me from doing what I can and can't do. That is just somebody else making my decisions for me. I'll kill myself struggling up a sand dune if I think the dune at the top is the view at the top is worth it. But nobody on this planet has got the right to decide whether or not I climb that dune. And we're standing beside the the old slag heaps just on the north side of Barrow. This is a train just going past because we're just beside the railway track. <laughs> but there's a great view from up there which you'd like to be able to see. I'd like to see it more regularly. I have seen it twice. On the first occasion, I got two able-bodied friends to physically hoist my electric mobility scooter over every barrier. And there's probably around a dozen on the route, give or take a few. On the second occasion, because I wanted to use it independently of other people, I, I designed and built a little trailer that went on the back of the scooter and folded out into a ramp. This ramp would completely cover the little hump and it would let me walk my mobility scooter through, scooter through. Unfortunately, on the very first use, I got to the top of the slag bank, but it destroyed the trailer. And I shouldn't be expected to do that, just to go up and have a look at sunset. What was it like when you were there? What did it feel like being up there? It was absolutely marvellous. I've been out in the boat since and made a video about Walney meetings. What that is basically, there's two flows of water coming into Walney Channel, one from the north, one from the south. And Walney meetings is the area where they meet. And to sit there at the top of the slag bank and watch that happen, I was enthralled. The flocks of all my favourite birds feeding in the mud, watching them all flying away and moving on as the water came up to them, watching the swirling of the water and the, the sky. You could see for miles, you could see the entire length of Walney. And if the council have their way, I'll never see that again. And that is just not fair. Certainly from that description, I can see why you'd want to be up there again. I want to be up there at midnight, just to see what it's like. I want to be up there on sunny days, cloudy days, when he's pelting it down with rain. I have a right to be there. Accessibility, it's not a privilege that, that people can bestow on you, it's a right. According to the Disability Discrimination Act, by now, all facilities like this should be open to, all, to, ev to everybody. So I guess you're waiting for the time when they are. Well, that's why I've started this campaign. I, uh, I wrote to the council about it and got a very flippant reply that didn't address any of the facts. And the basic argument seemed to be that as these, be the, as these barriers come to the end of the useful life, they will be replaced with more accessible ones. I have two arguments with that. One, kissing gates on Walney are already being replaced, like for like, they're not using the modern radar gate, which will allow disabled people through. And two, these barriers have got a usable life far longer than I have. 
So what they're saying is that yes, the route will be made accessible, but not in your lifetime. Colin, that's great, thank you. You're welcome. Smash it.